Hey guys, Jeff Kennelweed here. This is our 2015 Ram Promaster van. I don't know if I should call it a camper van or an adventure van or a conversion van or what, but we basically got an empty cargo van and set it up for exactly what we needed to do. We had pretty, you know, pretty normal day jobs in the Bay Area and we wanted to head out two, three hours to all the fun spots every weekend to go out and ride our dirt bikes and mountain bikes. So we realized with our Toyota Tacoma, things were getting stolen out of the back. It was a real hassle loading it, unloading it, and it just having everything get rained on, hanging out open in the back, it's not ideal. So yes, it works, but with the Promaster, we get the same gas mileage. It's a heck of a lot easier leaving everything in the back when you get someplace for the night and you can move more easily inside of it. With our family growing, it's been easier with the baby than the truck would have been. So all in all, I'm quite happy with this setup. Why a Promaster? Uh, we had this crazy driveway back in Marin that has kind of like an S to it and it was really steep. And so you were off camber and turning and it would almost always pull one of the wheels of the vehicle up into the air and the sprinters and the transits that I tried to back up that driveway couldn't make it. And I tried with the Promaster and we were still on three wheels, but it made it. So we bought a Promaster, uh, that was a few years ago now. I've got maybe 25,000 miles on it and I'm pretty darn happy with it. When we were looking for a Promaster to get, uh, we really did not want a white van. So that narrowed down the choices from lots of vans to about four in the area. And so once we came and found this one in particular, I liked the dark color, I thought it would look okay. And then it had, what well, I wasn't sure if it was gonna be good or bad. I kind of thought it would be better, but in hindsight, I was wrong. Um, we got it with a single driver, dual passenger seat configuration. And so if you're building out your van at the garage and back, you can't really have three in the front and no way to get from the front to the rear. So I moved the double passenger seat to the, basically the rear part and sourced a single front seat. And so now it's a four person seat belt capacity. In the future, I wanna use a three person bench seat back here and actually push it back a little bit and go to a single motorcycle capacity rather than a double. But for now, we've got the single passenger, single driver, and then dual person rear bench seat. Someone mentioned that when everyone's talking about their van, the first thing they always pull out and show off is the fridge. And that's because it's awesome having a good fridge with you wherever you go. Uh, I don't use it to get groceries or anything like that, but for bringing family dinners to the park, for going out on a mountain bike ride, it's just so great to have a nice cool beverage ready to go. So I got this cheap little fridge. I don't think it was even 300 bucks. It was a great deal. It's wired directly to the battery in the Promaster and the Promaster comes with deep cycle battery, starting battery stock which is a heck of a lot better if you're going to have a lot of draw like this refrigerator. And honestly, it's a compressor driven fridge. It doesn't really draw a whole lot of electricity. So I've had a good experience with it. It's an edge star. I don't remember how many liters, maybe 40 something. Um, I didn't have time to make any kind of a sliding contraption. We just had a little baby. So simple is good. So the cabinet has enough space that you can actually open it. And that's simple. It works. Um, we do camp in this occasionally. I've camped in it more than the rest of the family has. And the bed, it's not perfect, but it works pretty well. We want it to be separate from all the toys. So I can nest two pieces of wood right up here. And I've got some angle iron that I've made some brackets for that fits right here. And the angle iron sets up here and then the bed slides out. And I've got a 48 inch wide, 72 inch deep sleeping platform right here above the passenger seat. And that works pretty well. You have to climb onto it over the front seats, but it's not that bad. And the inside's all paneled with maple. I don't know much about woodworking and I figured maple would look pretty and it lasts a long time because it's a hardwood. So I've got quarter inch maple on the sides and on the roof and I held it all up with M5 rib nuts. So I can actually remove all the wall panels really easily if I wanna add wiring or more insulation or what. Um, I've got a porthole above the shelf here and that porthole is great because if I go to Home Depot and get a sheet of plywood, the garage is only seven feet long. So I need to actually put anything over seven-ish feet. Uh, I can fit an eight foot two by four at an angle, but a full on sheet of plywood needs to go through the porthole to fit in the back. Um, if I was into surfing, I'd probably need to fit a surfboard in that way too. Luckily, I don't surf. Here we have the rear of the van, the garage. This is basically the priority during the build out. The whole reason we bought a van is so we could go ride our dirt bikes, go ride our mountain bikes, and just have everything self-contained because on the long drives from where we used to live out to the mountains, it was three plus hours and you're stopping to get gas, sometimes you're spending the night in weird hotels. 
and just having the motorcycles, the mountain bikes, all of our gear exposed, that was no good. We had a couple pairs of moto boots stolen, a few other things got yanked. So it's just way easier to keep it all enclosed, out of sight, out of mind, out of the rain. I really like being able to get my knee pads on, get changed up in here where it's dry and warm. The garage is the heart and soul of any van build, in my opinion, for this type of stuff. So I've got two chocks up front for the front wheels of dirt bikes. Um, I can fit two full-size dirt bikes in here, no problem. Uh, they kind of nest, front wheels turned left, both of them. I've got some camping accessories, folding chairs, table, that sort of thing. Up in the front there, all tucked in. I usually carry a bicycle pump as well, super handy. And then on the right side, I can usually put one mountain bike with both wheels still on it, and then a second mountain bike with one front wheel removed. Our goal was to have two dirt bikes, two mountain bikes, no wheels off, no hassle, just fit it all on the back, head down, visit my friends in Santa Cruz, my parents, whatever, just have it all in here, no big deal. And that basically worked, but this van's a little bit short for all those kind of toys. So having to remove one front wheel from one mountain bike, I'm okay with that as a compromise. It's not that much work and it all fits in here. I also didn't want to have anything obstructing overhead. I wanted to be able to change a flat tire, uh, get dressed, uh, just have a dry place out of the elements to hang out and do a little bit of work. And this garage totally makes that happen. It's about seven feet long, a little bit under seven feet in distance. Height wise, I can stand up in there comfortably. And uh, I did have to put some paneling all through the rear. When we first got the van, I was driving around with my wife's dirt bike in the back. I forget why, but at some point I went over some kind of a bump and it bounced the bike up far enough that the tie down just it was able to get it swinging and the handlebar punched the wall and it dented the wall from the inside out. So I've got a sweet dent on the driver's side of the van punched from the inside out. And hopefully this new window I've got on order will show up and that'll take care of the spot that has the dent. So that would be a cool little trick. Uh, the paneling prevents that happening again. And it's not super thick paneling. There is insulation behind it. I just use this aluminum, uh, aluminum bubble insulation. It's a lot better than nothing. And then I use some sound deadening material as well. And there's a noticeable difference. Um, I've got a little step on the trailer hitch as well. Super simple, but <laughs> it's super handy. And honestly, with the leaf springs removed, the back is now low enough that now that the van's been lowered a little bit with that second leaf spring removed, it's, I can actually put my dirt bike in without a ramp, pulling it out without a ramp's no issue. And as long as it's not muddy or I'm super tired or whatnot, then I've been loading the bike in and out, the dirt bike, without a ramp. And that's just awesome. All in all, this van's been a lot of work. I probably put 150 hours into it, but to me, it's been worth every minute. Um, if you're thinking about building a van, do it. Build it to what you think you're going to use it for. And then as your needs change, which mine certainly have, I'm gonna be changing the van in the near future. So you know what, that's kind of the fun of it. You can adapt it to your needs and it's never gonna to be totally right. So I spent so much time stressing over the details. I kind of regret almost overthinking it. I think I just should have started building it sooner and then just learned as I went because here I am having, being really happy with it but realizing I do need to change a few things and that's just how it's gonna go and that's okay. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Thanks.